focused a lot on uh, explainability and interpretability. So we've heard a lot of this um, in prior panels, but we're really going to focus in on it here. Uh, so we're going to start. Um, Mena is our first speaker. She's going to be giving you a framework for explainability. Sorry, a question before we start. Where can we find the papers? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, the folder where you uh, uploaded the papers. Oh, I should ask this. Uh, I'll get back to you. I'll, I'll put the... Uh, sure. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, you will have the program soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, welcome back after lunch. Um, everyone's here. So um, I'm presenting a really exciting paper for me because it's a sort of also an experiment in collaborative work. You see, we have a lot of authors, and I will get to this in a, point, in, in a moment while we talk to them. Um, so the paper is entitled Towards Explainable AI, Structuring the Process of Explanations. And um, I want to make this session a little bit more interactive. So um, if you have questions, if you have something to add, just try it out or like, um, tell me <laughs> with where you want it to be. Um, so, the main focus that we have is on processes of explanation. Um, as I mentioned in my comment earlier, our perception of explainable AI consists of a process. And it usually has the steps of understanding a machine learning model, refining a model, and at the end, um, uh, sorry, diagnosing a model, and the end, refining the model, which is sort of this interactive machine learning paradigm. Um, so we came together as a group of people interested in working in explainable AI and asked ourselves how we can structure these processes of explanation. And um, we were thinking there are so many fields out there that are trying to do explanation in many different contexts. So if we look at teaching, for example, pedagogy, um, you see that explanations happen all the time. We have methods of explanations. Um, we have people explaining difficult concepts or explaining very small concepts and then growing with them. Um, we can also look at storytelling, where we essentially are uh, trying to create explanations using uh, storytelling methods and narratives. Um, we can look at the study of dialogue and argumentation. Um, and here we want to look at success successful rhetoric in order uh, to get to a good argumentation structure. Um, and the first day of the show, um, we can look at programming. Um, so uh, essentially when we're doing programming, we have this very, very um, a complex phenomena that we want to break down into simpler steps uh, in order to understand them and also to work with them. Um, we can look at trust building, uh, where people are trying to generate trust using explanations and at the end, we wanted also to look at gamification. So uh, using gamification approaches, for example, to motivate users. And when I look at the room here, I can see a lot of expertise in the different uh, areas that I'm mentioning here. And I'm happy to get feedback on all of these areas later on. So we have this large group, and every one of us said, OK, I'm, I'm willing to be an expert in that topic that I know nothing of. So we went back and read a lot of these papers um, and then came back together and had a lot of meetings where every one of us was calling him, him or herself the expert on that topic. And we were trying um, in this setting to come up with um, a, a good framework to structure explanation processes. Um, so essentially we want to borrow the methodology from all of these established domains in order to explain AI in a way that would make sense to all of these experts. And that's the interesting experiment part in writing this paper. Um, so what we came up with is this explanation process model. It consists of different components, but basically um, it's built upon this idea that we have many, many different building blocks. In this case, we have an explanation block, Every explanation block has a strategy and a medium. So the strategy here is simplification, and the medium that we're using is a video. You see that in this icon up there. Um, so it's a very simple concept. And then using this concept of building blocks, we can generate many explanation blocks as a way to connect uh, this process of explainability. 
we can connect them using pathways. In this case, I chose a linear pathway, but I could also choose a pathway that gets us back to something that we've already seen. So for example, in this case, I start with the simplification block, and then the user has the choice to either use a verbalization approach, which is on the, on the top, um, so um, I can explain something by abnormality, so contrasting it to something that I'm explaining, or I can use a visualization on the bottom where I'm getting an overview first and details on demand. <coughs> so this choice is basically given to the user and they would get the same type of explanation just using different methodologies. Um, when we build these blocks, we can construct them, put them together to get phases. So in this case, I have this first phase, which is the understanding phase. And after each phase, we propose that we have a verification step, which is consistent with stuff that has been reported in trust building, trust calibration, um, but also in several uh, gamification approaches where we're trying to reach levels and at the end of the level we should know something about the level we're in in order to get to a more difficult level. So we have these verification blocks, in this case also consisting of strategies and needs. Um, and in this case, the example is a flipped classroom. So um, the system is asking the human whether they understood something in a certain way, and, and they have to explain it to the system. Um, and we're using a dialogue-based agent. Um, in this case, it's a verbalization plus, so that's the item on top. Then we can go into the second phase, in this case, the diagnosis, and again, we can split into different methodologies. So, in a nutshell, this is a way uh, to, um, to structure explanation processes um, so that we can build up a complex explainable AI approach. Um, so, we're trying to, to think about explainable AI as this continuous uh, adaptive process, and this is a way to structure it. Um, this, this model here can be extended in many different ways, and we're proposing it um, based on our expertise in these different topics. But I'm sure that many of you will have additions. So I want to open up this conversation on thinking about explainable AI as a process. Let me give you an example. So if we look at um, very simple decision trees, we can start in this very first block by explaining how the models work in a video. So we have a video that explains the simple ideas behind the decision tree. Then we can add the data in a certain domain. So in this case, I'm deciding on uh, how to classify fruits, for example. Um, and then I can decide what, which type of explanation I, would, I, I want to choose. And now I've understood the model and I've understood the domain. Then I'm asking the user um, a couple of questions that would indicate whether they understood these two concepts. And then I'm moving on to a diagnosis phase where I'm actually adding data into the system. Um, and asking questions, uh, or, or in this case, explaining first um, how the model would actually work with given data. So the, uh, the difference between the first model explanation and the second one is that the second one has actual data in it. So very, very simplistic approach. And based on that, um, we came together and um, had these very long collaborative sessions where we were debating how we define the different concepts. So uh, one of the concepts are these pathways. So how do we navigate between the building blocks? Um, so suggestions are um, either linear pathways or iterative pathways. Um, we could also guide the user through this process or have a more serendipitous process where they're exploring uh, the explanation um, rather than having guidance. Um, then we collected mediums, explanation mediums. Um, and uh, in essence, we were thinking that whatever we can explain using a visualization, we could, for example, also explain using a video or a comic. And there are a lot of other mediums out there, and there is a question here, which medium is more suitable to a given explanation or a given audience? We also collected um, and thought about explanation strategies, because different ex experts had different opinions on that. At the end, um, the, cat the categorization that we all agreed on was um, having these three groups. So we have inductive bottom-up explanations, deductive top-down explanations, and contrastive explanations. So explaining something by comparing it to something else. Yeah. 
Um, so, so based on that, um, we could order, sort in all the strategies that we collected from the different domains. And we also uh, collected different verification strategies. And I encourage you to read the paper in more details. We have um, a lot of supplementary material provided from the different domains. So now that we've done this exercise, the question is, how do we actually approach a systematic methodology? How do we design such an explanation process? We don't have any guidance for that. And um, one proposal that we have is to ask the communities to come together and actually design guidelines for such explanation processes that work for different tasks, data, and users. Um, in essence, what we want to achieve here is a robust methodology for explainable AI, but not reinventing the wheel, but borrowing from established methodologies that are already out there exploring explanation processes. So that's our paper towards explainable AI. Um, I will also do a little bit of self-advertisement. <laughs> so, um, very quick advertisement to our workshop at BIT. Um, it's the second workshop on visualization for AI explainability. And it might be very interesting for uh, some of you guys because we are actually soliciting interactive blog posts rather than a traditional paper format. Um, so if you're interested, please visit this XAI. Um, and the deadline is in uh, roughly two months. So thank you very much, and I'm happy for your feedback. Do you have any questions? Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I was wondering, I think this is really, really nice approach, but I was just wondering how you feel about this. Um, this is kind of like uh, you're trying to get a simplified strict model, obviously. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that uh, contrasts with some of the points that were made earlier in the, in the day about the this perceptual mismatch and we always need to kind of like negotiate that and um, how do you think this kind of like more formalized way of going on, how, how do you kind of like balance that? Yeah, it's a very good question actually because I think that uh, what we have here um, is uh, trying to abstract to a very simplified process in order to design experiments that would guide us through this design process. Uh, but when we actually tried to put it into an actual system, we had to come up with many different overarching matrices and, and like functions that would help us navigate through these strategies. So, for example, uh, we have to measure the model quality persistently throughout the process. Um, we had to look at uh, the trust and model the machine trust in the human and model the human trust in the machine and that kind of stuff. So uh, there is a lot of ongoing work that we're doing in this area. Uh, but at the end, if you want to go into that direction, I think the only way that we can approach it at the moment is uh, to, to work on a very specific case, like very specific problem, task, data, user, because otherwise if you want to stay on this very formal level, uh, we cannot accommodate all, all the, um, the ideas in there. Do you have other questions? Also. So what we're trying to do is like formalize uh, what sort of explanation strategies, mediums, and so on are out there that has been, have to been discussed somewhere else, but we don't make a judgment on the complexity in which they are put into context. So you can design a whole system um, based on um, like a complex model that is designed for engineers, for example, or model developers, and based on this process, or you can design something tailored to end users or novices based on this, this model. We, we try to be agnostic of that um, and because we wanted to collect the knowledge that's out there in general about explanation processes and transfer them to XAI. Um, I'm happy to talk about more of that offline uh, about some of the work. <laughs>